Hello everyone, it's uh, Nathan and welcome to my final presentation. Um, amazingly enough, I've not done a voiceover PowerPoint ever before, so I decided to try it out for this presentation. Um, I hope everybody out there is having a great weekend and enjoying the wonderful weather we're having. Um, I use screenshots of my projects throughout the semester, copying into PowerPoints, and then use Screencast-O-Matic to create the video um, and upload it to video that you see here. Starting with weeks number one through four, uh, we delved into the foundational theories of adult learning or andragogy. Uh, these activities fairly clearly fit with the third program objective of learning theory. Uh, this was largely a review given that I took the foundations course last semester, but it was still great to revisit some of the principles uh, that we covered before applying them to the projects that we did throughout the semester. During these weeks, we learned more about ourselves, both as learners and as teachers. I found that I am, not surprisingly, a largely visual learner. I also tend to use an apprenticeship and developmental style as an educator. One of the most important things that I took away from this section of the course was having a consistent and grounded approach to curriculum design and revision, as well as when and how to integrate technology. The ADI and SAMR models are tools that I'll take with me um, to, and continue to work with uh, throughout my career as a medical educator. Moving into the traditional classroom project, I chose to create an enhanced web page about the social determinants of health. This is a topic that's important in my field of pediatrics and something that I had been wanting to tackle for some time. Um, I chose to use Insert Learning for this project to create an enhanced interactive web page. I would tie this project into objective number one, which is instructional methods. Insert Learning allowed me to take a fairly flat and dry web page and turn it into something more. The tool allows you to enhance a web page by adding additional text, links, videos, and question prompts. Uh, this fit well with the idea that the learner engagement is really a key to understanding and retention. The audiovisual theory of learning emphasizes that there are dual channels for processing information and that by engaging both, the learner takes in more information and is more likely to be engaged. The thing, I think the uh, biggest lesson that I learned through practice with this project is that text by itself is really pretty darn boring, uh, particularly younger learners such as millennials and those that come after them, uh, simply uh, handing them a piece of uh, paper with a journal article on it or um, sending them to a web, web page that's really text heavy is probably a really poor uh, educational strategy. Interactive video that's visually heavy content um, can take more time up front to create, uh, but in the end the learner is going to be better served. For the online classroom project, I focused on teaching about respiratory distress in the newborn. This is a topic that's near and dear to my heart as a neonatologist, and something that I frequently teach my students in person. I found that as I've done this talk over and over, it's kind of started to become a bit boring for me. Uh, so making it, in, make it into an online module was kind of a nice way for me to export this content from the in-class portion to something that the students can do on their own. Um, I would tie this project into objective number two, which is innovation and teaching. I chose to use a site called MindMo to create a thought or mind map of this topic. Uh, respiratory distress in the newborn can be broken down into a relatively small number of topics that combine to create an, a greater overall uh, subject or whole. Um, I started using another thought mapping site called Coggle about a year ago, and I found it really useful for visualizing relationships between art items that uh, kind of create again to uh, come together to create that greater whole. Uh, one of the biggest advantages of using this approach is that it naturally leads to chunking of the information into smaller, digestible pieces. For this project, I chunked off each of the common types of respiratory distress, but then used a similar scaffold to break down the items further. Uh, this should allow the learners to go from topic to topic and compare and contrast the items that they go through for deeper understanding. As with many of the sites we use during the semester, MindMo offers both free and premium versions, and there were some limitations to the free product. Uh, when I went back yesterday to take screenshots from my, of my thought map for this presentation, I found that a couple of my picture links had broken um, as they relied on external web content that had been taken down. Uh, with the premium version, you could avoid this by directly uploading the content into the site. Um, a lesson learned here would be to always double-check that your links work and that the content still displays the way you intend it to. 
uh, before you actually deliver it to your learners. For the flipped classroom project, I focused on another topic that I discuss with my students commonly, neonatal jaundice. I ended up using GoFormative to create this project, but this was not my original plan. I've been working with two of my partners on a grant-funded project <clears throat> to create a Flip Classroom app for the past year or so, um, and I was actually hoping to submit a link to that project to create and create some new content about neonatal jaundice <clears throat> for this week's assignment. Well, that plan went down in flames when the link to our simulated app broke and it couldn't be resurrected in time uh, to submit for this assignment. Um, I'll tie this project into objective number four, which is best practices in teaching, because I had organized the content but needed to find a new way to create an effective learning environment to deliver that content. I ended up settling on GoFormative because the site allowed me to create a module that included pictures, video, and text content, and it fit pretty well with the format that I had planned to use within the app. Our plan for the app was to assign a brief online module to the learners that included background information and then some assessment questions that could guide the in-person teaching session. Uh, in the end, though, I was quite happy with the way that the module turned out, even though it didn't fit the plan I had going in. I'm a firm believer in the flipped classroom approach, and as a clerkship director for pediatrics, my goal is to transition more of our traditional didactic content towards this approach. A lesson learned from this experience is that sometimes you need to be flexible with your teaching approach. Uh, if you have a solid understanding of what content you need to deliver and understand how best to deliver it, there are many different tools that you can use in order to make that happen. Sometimes things aren't going to work out the way you expected, but if you have a plan and some ingenuity, you can usually make the best of the situation. For the hybrid classroom project, I used Prezi to present content on congenital heart defects. In terms of the end visual appeal of the projects I completed, this was by far my favorite. I'd been exposed to Prezi in the past, but never created one myself. And I would tie this project into objective number six, which is the instructional technology piece. Much like the respiratory distress module, this is a topic that is covered frequently in the NICU. Congenital heart disease is a topic that almost demands uh, visual teaching as the physical relationships between the parts of the heart determine the impact on the patient. Prezi was a great tool for this for a couple of reasons. First, there are a ton of different types of congenital heart disease, each with its own, own features. Uh, much like a thought mapping site, Prezi really allows you to chunk information into smaller pieces, and then the learner can drill down to get more details about the items that they're really interested in. I found the ability to include pictures and video really great, and overall, the navigation through Prezi was definitely more compelling and engaging than traditional PowerPoint presentations. In terms of lessons learned, there were a few. First, um, although Prezi looks pretty simple and easy when you view the overall page, it takes quite a bit of time to complete. Um, in the hybrid classroom, your challenge is to seamlessly integrate online and in-class portions. Um, in order to do this, you really have to have a well-thought-out plan and understand where the technology is useful and where it really should just be left out. Our final project was the virtual field trip. I chose to uh, visit a place that's near and dear to my heart, the NICU patient room. Um, as a teaching neonatologist, we constantly have new learners rotating through our units, and the NICU can be a really intimidating place the first time you go in there, as it's really like nothing else in medicine. My virtual field trip focused on some major pieces of technology in the NICU, including the incubator, the nursing supply carts, the ventilator, and the patient monitor. These are items that the students will encounter daily, and will really need to be comfortable with in order to be successful on their rotation. I would relate this module to learning objective number four, which is best practices in teaching. Use of video fits with the audio-visual theory of learning as well as best practices around creating engaging content for your learners. There was a lot of content to cover, so I also attempted to chunk the content into smaller pieces, focusing on four specific items in the room. To create this project, I used Adobe Premiere Pro. I think Kevin might have mentioned this, uh, that we have access as faculty members to the Adobe suite on one of our discussion boards, so I really want to give him a huge shout out for sharing this technology. It was great. Uh, this was my first time trying uh, video editing, and I learned a ton during the process. A couple of the things that I took away were, one, 
have a script. Uh, I had an outline of the things I wanted to cover, but not a fully written script, uh, which, by the way, I'm using for this project. Uh, when I reviewed the video, I was appalled by my use of filler words like um, which I still catch myself doing even with the script. Uh, but a script eliminates a lot of that and should also eliminate some of the uh, extraneous content and make your presentation more concise and, and shorter to you. I would also do more to chuck the, chunk the content than I did. Uh, several other learners use ThingLink for their projects, and if I had it to do again, I'd create four short videos and then link them to a main page so that the learners could select just the content that they really wanted to review. Overall, I, I really enjoyed this semester. I think the thing I appreciated most was that we actually used the tools that we were learning about and talking about. I, I can't say enough about how helpful this was to get some practical, hands-on use of these tools. I intentionally used different technology tools with each project so that I would get a broad exposure to new tech throughout the length of the course, and I found that I really came across some great tools, and one or two that I probably won't use again as well. Um, I also created content that I will actually use in the end, and all of these projects are essentially ready to use for learners uh, now or could be adapted pretty easily to do so. Finally, I really appreciated that the learning community uh, came together the way it did during the semester. I learned as much by participating in the discussion boards as I did through creating my own projects, and I'd like to really thank Dr. McMillan as well as everybody in the class for making this a fun and really useful uh, experience this semester.